Hi, I'm Willie, and welcome back to my channel. Thank you to everyone for being here. And I mean everyone. Subscribers, casual viewers, donators, people who interact, everybody. Thank you. So, uh, the last video was a very non-scientific, very off-the-cuff, just crazy video about uh, access points. I'm going to let some of that stuff sit there, and then I'm going to do a follow-up video on that next week. Use some of the suggestions that people people put out there so thank you for that tonight what we're going to talk about is this and this is the ubiquity edge point r6 i got this and i opened the box but it hasn't been out of the box i haven't plugged it in so we're going to unbox this uh, after we talk about what the edge point is and then i'm going to show you the size of the six compared to an edge router so Real quick, let's hop over to Ubiquiti's website. So if you go to uh, ubnt.com slash edgemax slash edgepoint, it'll bring up the website for this product. And um, what it, what they're billing it as is Intelligent Wisp Control Point with Fiber Protect. And, you know, you can see that this is a tower that's got multiple radios on it. The cable's coming out of this instead of being home run back to the bottom so you can see this orange cable right here is uh, f uh, fiber and there's probably power somewhere and then you know the radios are all being powered off here this can be AC or DC powered so we'll take a look at that this is the 8 port so let's take a look you've got a console port and then this is probably the reset button right over here you've got your DC in so that's a 54 volts in, you've got a PoE in or E and E0, then you've got 54, 24 volt PoE output um, on these two, and then you have 24 volt PoE with two pairs um, that span here, and then you've got SFP ports, and everything gets fed in through the cable to this uh, cable feed, so it's nice and, and organized. And you can see here they've got a Pico station. It looks like a Pico station. I don't know if that's supposed to be mounted to the back of this. You can see there's the strain relief for the fiber. So that's that orange fiber coming in. you got a strain relief plugging into an SFP port. And they're kind of showing you some of the advantage of this. It's got an all-in-one compact design. So here it is again. you got your fiber coming in. I don't see power on here. So, I mean, these are really nice illustrations. I just don't see power. And then uh, your blue cords, which that doesn't look like tough cable. So um, it provides powerful routing features and link balancing, redundancy, increased performance for your outdoor links. Now I have the Edgepoint R6, which is the smallest. It's got uh, five gigabit ports, one SFP port, no SFP plus ports. It's got one DC terminal block or one. 24 volt four pair in it's got five 24 volt two pair out so this is the smallest and then you can see that the big boy has got uh, all kinds of power options and has two sfp plus ports so you could potentially throw 20 gigabits of data up to this thing so um let's go ahead and uh, let's take it out of the box so the box isn't that big um, this is a large Tervis cup, and uh, this is the box. I don't know if this is doing anything for you, but uh, I need to get a ruler for this. So it's got a quick start guide. It's quite a bit, this quick start guide is uh, quite a bit bigger than the other quick start guides that I'm used to. So, and it's actually uh, saddle stitched, which, um, you know, normally the uh, quick start guides are just folded. So, this is uh, it's not bad. So it tells you all the requirements, tells you everything that it comes with, um, tells you where to secure the uh, ground wire. We'll take a look at all this here in just a second. And uh, so it's just another, uh, you know how I feel. I really like these uh, quick start guides. You know, a lot of people can learn a lot of things um, just from the quick start guide. So then the next thing we have is the actual unit itself. So this is the, uh, the Edgepoint R6. We flip it over before we start taking this thing apart. You can see 
that this has this built-in uh, bracket and it's actually kind of rounded so a pole would fit in there and you could tighten this right to the pole so then here is the hole for the, uh, the strap that goes through there and it's got uh, you know pretty decent Let's see what else is in the box pipe clamp I don't know if you've noticed some of the, uh, the newer products they don't come with the pipe clamps and then we've got our PoE injector there's this so um, I think we are going to use the PoE injector for this guy but we're not going to use the pipe clamp probably breaks your heart I know I like to keep even though this is uh, lab gear I like to keep everything together just so I have it And just for a size reference, here's that the edge point six. Here's an edge router X. So edge router X, edge point six. So, but this thing's going to be out in the air, and it provides you know a little bit of a, a different function. So in the quick start guide, it tells you to depress this and slide out. So this little uh, opening right here, this little hole, I actually pressed on that, so I'll close it again. If you don't press on it, it doesn't open. So press down, open it up, and uh, it looks like on this, what we've got on this cover is we can actually probably punch these little plastic things out for each cable that we want to run in here. So that's that's pretty nifty. So, you know, the smaller version doesn't have the opening. Um, which doesn't bother me, but all right. So inside, let's see if I can get uh, start over here. So over here, you've got a reset button on the bottom. You've got ground lug on the top, and you've got your green uh, 24 volt uh, DC input, and then you've got ETH zero, one, two, uh, three, four, and then. Over here, see there in the back, you got your SFP port. So we're going to go ahead and plug this guy in. Like I said, I've never, um, I've never plugged it in. I've never had my hands on one of these until now. So we are going to plug it in. I guess I need this open. I'll see what I did. I got it on there wrong. <laughs> and I wasn't pushing down. You do have to push down. Don't get in a big hurry with this and push down on the tab. So, um, let's see. We are going to go ahead and we're going to set this guy right back here. And we're going to get our PoE adapter. And we're going to plug it into the, uh, somebody called this a rat's nest. This is much better than it was. And I actually have cable management. Um, I'm trying to decide what's going to be permanent rack back here, what's going to be lab rack, all that stuff. It's technically all lab, um, but some of this does uh, feed into my production network. So I plugged that into uh, ETH0, I got a power light, and then uh, I'm assuming that this is like the same as an edge router where we would go to like 192, 168, 1.1 1 .1 while we're plugged into that, but you know what assuming does. So according to the quick start guide, It is 1.1, and we've got to be in ETH0, so we'll go into the power injector here and uh, configure our PC with a static IP, and we'll get on it here. Okay, I do have a gigabit link now, 
So we will uh, put our PC on the 192.168.1 network. And for now, we'll just leave it like that. Should come up. Okay, same thing as when we get into our edge router for the first time. UBNT, UBNT, accept that agreement, click login. <coughs> and you can see it says edge point, edge point router, six port, and by default run in version 1.7.2. And it also did not prompt us to run um, the wizard. There's no DHCP by default. VPN, so this is all very edge router-ish, which it should be because I think it's pretty much running on the same uh, operating system here. It knows the date. That's interesting because it doesn't have an internet connection yet. So I don't know if it's pulling that from the client or if it's got a battery in there or something else. So we're going to do the WAN plus 2 LAN 2. ETH0 is going to be our WAN. Uh, we're going to enable the default firewall. And by the way, the default firewall with Ubiquity is fantastic. So um, I sometimes run into edge routers where people have, you know, and it's it's awesome to know how to, to create the firewalls and the policies, but like if you want to get up and going quickly, just use the wizard and it's, it's awesome. So... Um, we're going to go ahead and we'll change, uh, let's see, one, we'll only use one LAN, which should put that in a switch port, so we'll go ahead and apply that, apply the changes and reboot. So this is really the same as when we, uh, when we use an edge router, except this guy could be mounted up on a pole running our WISP for us. So this is, you know, a little bit more of a carrier grade, uh, at the, at the pop, at the pole type situation. I mean, you, um. You obviously can't, or or would be, it would be ill-advised to mount an edge router X or an edge router X SFP on a pole by itself. You could put it in a box. You could do all kinds of things. This guy is uh, purpose-driven, and so I'm going to be doing some ISP videos. So this guy is probably going to come into play. I need to pause this video for a second and grab a patch cable. Okay, so what I've got is I have the uh, my PC plugged into ETH1 on the edge point, and then ETH0 is going to a lab switch. So we'll switch our network configuration here to DHCP. And then we'll go to 101.1, see what happens. And it looks like we've got uh, internet. And there it is, we've got an IP on our WAN. And what we're going to do is we're going to hop over here to, uh, I originally went to download.ubnt.com, it redirected to ubnt.com slash downloads, went to EdgeMax, and then I went to EdgePoint, and I am going to download this firmware, which is version 1.9.1.1, it's about a 77 megabyte download, it'll take just a few seconds, looks like it's done, so we're going to hop over here, we're going to go over to our system tab, Just going to update a few of these settings. Save those real quick. <clears throat> and then we are going to upgrade the system image. Spin in there. Still uploading. <clears throat> and once that uploads, 
it will uh, prompt us for a reboot. And we'll go ahead and reboot this. Okay, the system looks like it's rebooted, so we'll reload this here. Still logging in with UBNT, UBNT. We're going to change that real quick. So uh, just like with edge routers, there are a few things that I, that I like to do. Um, you notice that I changed the system host name uh, to something relevant. I set a, uh, a system name server, and I changed the domain name. Um, don't ever enable Telnet server. Um, hopefully they'll just take that out. I don't think that that's necessary. If I was sending logs to a server, I would enter that information here. UBNT discovery is enabled. If I'm doing SNMP, that information goes here. You know, you've got your, I mean, this is, I mean, it is, uh, you know, truly an EdgeMax device. So we are on uh, version 1.9.1.1 now. So the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go into here into users. And I'm going to add a user. And then we are going to log out. You should always uh, save and back up your config as well. And we are going to go in here and we are going to delete that UBNT user because we do not want to leave that in the system. So, I mean, this really is a neat device. Um, so now we've got the same wizards as we've got before, so we can come in here and we can add interfaces. Uh, so you can even do PPPoE with this. It, I mean, this thing really is, it really is neat. In fact, uh, I've got a pole out in the yard where we're going to do some antenna mounting and things like that. Uh, we're going to put the RF elements horn up. We're going to play around with some radios now that the weather is nice. And uh, I think I'm going to put, uh, you know, uh, an Ethernet, an outdoor Ethernet to the pole. And I think we're going to use this to power all of our radios so I don't have to jack around with uh, power strips and cords and everything. We're just going to take the, uh, you know, I'm going to put that outdoor Ethernet in and we're going to run it right to the edge point. We're going to mount this guy on the pole. I'm going to go ahead real quick. I'm going to give you one last look at this. Um, if there's any type of configuration you want to see, put that down in the comments. But I'm going to go ahead and unplug this guy and give you one last look uh, at the hardware. That way, if you've got any questions, you can let me know. So this is it. Again, that orientation that the U is facing up, so that's how the orientation would be. Got the, the cover, so this is the smaller one. So we would pop out, you know, these plastic holes, and uh, there's the inside. It really is, um, it really is a neat device, and it really adds to the, you know, the whole uh, WIPS whole provider platform. Uh, maybe I can get my hands on one of the bigger ones with the SFP Plus ports. That'd be kind of nifty. And then there's that that lock. See, I had to push down on that. And then there's also, looks like there's a couple screw holes. So once you get it up where you want to mount it, you could uh, put a screw in there and it wouldn't come open. So, yeah, this thing, uh, I think we're going to get a lot of use out of this in future videos. So I'm, I'm pretty happy with this. That's it for tonight. Uh, please, if you like the video, give me a thumbs up. Please subscribe. Please comment and share. Please use all the affiliate links. You can use my Amazon store link to help me out, keep the channel going. You can purchase your own EdgePoint uh, products. This one is the R6. As always, subscribe to me on uh, uh, or follow me on Twitter and Instagram. And you know we will see you in the next video.